An Okean magic tunes right into the spiritual trust of Western culture, elevating man like a tower above nature in that position of great power. In my experience, Kabbalah and Tenokian work hand in hand. It is best to use them both side by side. Kabbalah tends to work from within the human heart and mind, elevating you into the light of your potential. Enochian works externally, behind the forces of the material world. Liam Thomas Christopher, Kabbalah Magic and the Great Work, page 275. Overlooked and disregarded as a mere more powerful version of the lesser, the supreme invoking ritual of the pentagram, or SIRP, is a unique technique packing plenty of punch. Found in lectures of offshoot orders like Stella Matutina, SIRP follows the structure of the greater pentagram ritual and for this some call it a more subtle version of it. Initially, SRP was only taught to students of the second or inner order of the Golden Dawn and, if performed correctly, its effects can be felt in the Yetzirathic or formative world, which is right above or behind our reality and can be seen as its scaffold, or better yet, as the front-end code of the pages that are our world and wives. Structure and Components Working with the four elements, SIRP uses different combinations in all four directions. Working with a single force, the right multiplies the appropriate in all four. It incorporates colors, god forms such as zodiac and alchemical signs. Most important, it also alternates Enochian and Hebrew, producing a superior impact on the psyche. Usage. Getting the most credit, the four elements version is presented most often, bringing a bit of each element in a balanced way that invokes spirit. However, SIRP's primary purpose is actually different. As mentioned in my Modern Magic book review, the lesser ritual set the space, establishing one of the fields of operation. The greater and supreme rituals attune that field to a specific force, so you can conjure a spirit or use the energy in your day. In the case of SIRP, the spirit could be one of the elemental kings, Jin, Perauda, Nixa and Gop. It is not that the greater or supreme is simply more powerful than the lesser. The main difference is that it is specific or particular, while the lesser is general. Apparently, SIRP can become SBRP or the supreme banishing creature of the pentagram, which I only mention in this post. Either way, SIRP follows the lesser pentagram and hexagram rituals and can be used with opening by Watchtower, which is an elaboration by Israel Rigardi. SIRP and opening by Watchtower like opening by Watchtower, SIRP can also serve to cast a circle and invoke the guardians of the quarters, preparing your space for practical work. Opening by Watchtower is considered more potent and dramatic, yet it is also more pretentious since requiring the elemental tablets and tools. Unlike SIRP, opening by Watchtower cannot be used for invoking a specific force. Requiring nothing but your time and discipline, SRP is exceedingly versatile, very powerful and actually preferred by some golden donors and even telemites. Directions About 95% of the golden dawn books use the winds model in conjunction with matter's rule of invoking towards and banishing from the element's point or angle in the pentagram. In my humble opinion, this creates confusion in several ways. The first is that although having different names, the invoking air pentagram is identical to the water banishing pentagram. The second is that there isn't one but a couple of spirit pentagrams that do not follow this rule and the third, which more modern practitioners find rather senseless, is the placing of fire and air. Orum Solis Besides the Golden Dawn, there is also the Orum Solis method. Much simpler, that starts at the point slash angle where the element is attributed and moves clockwise to invoke or counterclockwise to banish. Pretty straightforward, the Orm Solis method also uses a single spirit pentagram. Scholars like Donald Tyson and others on the internet swear they never went back after switching to this approach. On the contrary, I do not have any experience with it, so this post focuses on the more quote-unquote standard Golden Dawn technique which, according to most scholars, including Donald Tyson, must be fundamental to any Western magician. Quote, There are several occultists who remark that the Golden Dawn's method of the pentagram makes for an inconsistent and clumsy system of invocation and banishment. It is surprising how quick students are to dismiss one of the fundamental techniques of a system that is the foundation of almost all Western magic today. It is my experience that much of the supposed awkwardness of the material that matters developed is attributable to a much deeper significance than it is immediately apparent. It is best to take a generous nature with the Golden Dawn system when it begins to look odd. You will likely find the value of its approach later. Time and time again I have found that the techniques that seemed needlessly circuitous had invisible mechanisms that one could only discover through practice. Do not be too quick to force a spiritual technique to make sense, 
Otherwise, you may out of ignorance modify it into powerlessness. Page 273, Liam Thomas Christopher, Kabbalah Magic and the Great Work. The Wind's Model After explaining it briefly, the Golden Dawn conversely recognizes that the Wind's Model creates this balance by placing two clashing elements next to each other despite their opposing qualities. The book also recognizes the southeast and northwest winds as more balanced and harmonious. Quote, the southwest wind is violent and explosive, the mingling of the contrary elements of fire and water. The northwest and southeast winds are more harmonious, uniting the influence of the two active and passive elements. Page 362, The Golden Dawn. This imperfection can be reconciled by using some common sense, the Tablet of Aristotle, the Rose Cross Woman and the Tablet of Union, swapping the places of fire and air. Eradicating the disharmony, this aligns all four elements according to their mutual qualities. The right way. Whether you should make such arrangements, your practice will show. I encountered that the mansion gets adapted by an increasing number of people. One example is Jeff Rhodes, another is Damon Brandt. And the person who actually made me think about it for the first time was the YouTuber Indigo Speaker. You do what feels right in your heart based on your empirical results. And when doing so, also consider this little passage from the Cicero's Golden Dawn Magic, which unlike the best-selling The Golden Dawn and Modern Magic provides an actually comprehensive explication of SIRP and all its forms and purposes. Quote, One of the things students sometimes get hung on is the search for the one true way. This would appear to be a byproduct of the same kind of unfortunate tribalism that causes strife between various religious sects, cultures and political groups. Some will always be convinced that there is the quote-unquote one true way to practice the golden dawn and everyone who practices the magic differently must be wrong. The fact of the matter is that the golden dawn tradition has always been growing and evolving over time and continues to do so. Today Golden Dawn temples exist in nearly every continent on earth. They have naturally adapted and developed their own unique ways. Rather than arguing with someone whose ritual minutia is by them to be the one true way, magicians should be open to new insights whether they agree with them or not. Knowledge is not static and the depth and breadth of our system are nearly endless. Spiritual growth is unique and our experiences with it are personal. Although we can agree on most of the standard precepts of our system, we cannot insist that everyone agrees with us on everything. And that is perfectly alright. Sandra Tabata and Chick Cicero, Golden Dawn Magic, pages 9 and 10. Spirit Pentagrams In SRP, the spirit pentagrams precede the elemental ones. In SBRP, that order is reversed. Due to being both active and passive, spirit has two pentagrams, making a total of four in the system. According to page 360 of the Golden Dawn book, these two spirit pentagrams should precede and close invocations as the equilibrium of the elements and in establishing the harmony of their influence. According to Golden Dawn magic by the Ciceros, the spirit pentagrams control the elemental ones. The two active control fire and air, whereas the two passive water and earth. And as mentioned, Golden Dawn spirit pentagrams have their own way of being traced. The active sling fire and air, the passive water and earth. And while this might seem not the most logical, there's a method to the madness. Quote, spirit is not an element. It cannot be expressed face to face like a gust of wind or a splash of water, nor it can be approached directly. It doesn't exist in any particular place. You cannot increase and decrease its quantity. You cannot even touch it, much less invoke and banish it. So what is one really doing when one draws the active invoking pentagram of spirit and vibrates the appropriate name? Spirit may have some kind of substance on a higher plane of existence, but here, in the realm of the senses, it can only be revealed as a pattern among the elements, a condition of equilibrium. This is why the Golden Dawn refers to the invoking pentagrams of spirit alternatively as equilibrating. Spirit does not exist in the realm of the elements, but it is evidenced by the relationship between those elements. When we call upon spirit, we are actually manipulating active and passive energies and creating a beautiful balance commonly experienced as vitality, clarity, joy and calm. The pentagram of spirit actives is started by drawing a line from the far angle to the air angle or in other words a line between the two active elements. The pentagram of spirit passives is begun by drawing a line from the earth angle to the water angle, the two passive elements. The combination of these two pentagrams is the most important and most beneficial symbolism in your work. They function like two cherubim between which the presence of God may be felt, such as in the legend of the Ark of the Covenant. Unquote. Liam Thomas Christopher, Kabbalah Magic and the Great Work. 
page 273. Considering this, we can extrapolate a few conclusions. 1. The spirit invoking pentagrams unite all four elements according to their qualities starting with passive or active, depending on their nature. Concluding with spirit, the actives move from fire, air, water and earth, and the passives do that from earth, water, air and fire. Either way, these invocations link all four by keeping them in harmony. It really is an equilibration resulting from the smooth transition between mutual qualities. 2. The spirit banishing or closing pentagrams, pair, group or close the elements into two couples or groups. Separated by spirit, this is an active pair between fire and air and passive one between water and earth. These pentagrams still start with one or the other if the pentagram is active or passive. But now, the couples are close to each other while quashing is prevented since spirit mediates between them. Aligning with the Tablet of Union, Aristotle's periodic table, the Rose Cross Woman and the Invocation of the Bornless One, Golden Dawn spirit pentagrams emphasize and result from reconciling the opposing active and passive principles. And though not necessarily matching the wins model, in my humble opinion they display nothing but balance and symmetry in the most beautiful way. Spirit pentagrams colors. Usually it is recommended that the spirit pentagrams are traced in brilliant white white. On the other hand, scholars like Scott Stanwyck suggest using bright and dark electric purple for actives and passives respectively. Spirit Pentagrams Names Despite the spirit pentagrams being technically two, the names to vibrate when tracing them are four. Corresponding to the four elements, the active pentagrams go with the ones of the active elements and the passive with those of the passive ones. Derived from the Tablet of Union, these names are Exarp, Hakoma, Nanta and Bitom. Translating into spirit of air, spirit of water, spirit of earth and spirit of fire, you can also think of them as quintessence of air, quintessence of water, quintessence of earth and quintessence of fire. Spirit pentagrams symbols. Unlike some variations of the greater, the fully stacked SIRP also employs corresponding sigils. For the spirit pentagrams, that is the alchemical sigil of ether, aka the spirit spokeswheel. Resembling a minimalistic symbol of a fanim that is traced clockwise going from left to right. Like the pentagrams, the sigils also go with their corresponding names. In the case of spirit, that is AHA for actives and agua for passives. The first translates into I am and the second is an otaricon of Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai or You are Mighty Forever Adonai. Meaning my word, Adonai is the word hermetic magicians use to call their AJ, especially when they don't know its actual name. Spirit pentagrams signs. Although modern magic omits that, butchering the right, the spirit pentagrams and sigils are followed by the LVX signs. The reason is that like opening by a watchtower and the whole hexagram formula, SRP was performed only by 5 equal 6 adepts and LVX are the signs of adeptus minor. On the contrary, spirit's actual great sign is opening or ending for invoking and closing the veil for banishing. While different sources use one or the other, in Golden Dawn Magic, Sandra Tabata and Chick Cicero advise incorporating both. That's rending the veil and then giving the LVX signs, which are Osiris Slain, Apophis and Typhon, Morning Isis and Osiris Risen. Elemental Pentagrams, Names and Colors In the Golden Dawn system, the fire pentagram is red. Its invoking form starts at the top moving clockwise. The name to vibrate with this one is Oiptea Pedokie, meaning he whose name is unchanged from what it was. The air pentagram is yellow. Its invoking form begins at the water or right upper angle and continues anti-clockwise. It associates with the phrase Oro Iba Aostpi, meaning he who cries in the place of desolation. The water pentagram is navy or dark blue, which differs from the blue in LRP. Its invoking version commences at the air or left upper angle, proceeding clockwise. It associates with the name Empe Arce Gaheo or Empe Arce Gaheo, meaning he who is the first true creator, the horned one. Depending on who you ask, the earth pentagram is either green or black. Its invoking form starts at the top continuing counterclockwise. The name to vibrate with this one is Emordial Hectega or Emordial Hectaiga, and this means he who burns up iniquity without equal. Enochian. By researching enough, you might find that no one knows how exactly to pronounce Enochian, and this also applies to Aramaic, which is also considered an angelic language. Based on my research, there are three main ways to pronounce Enochian words. Extending the syllables, the first is invented by the Golden Dawn, and you can find it in pretty much all Golden Dawn books. As long as I know, however, according to some of John Dee's material, the angels suggest pronouncing the words as if they are in plain English. 
hence there really is no extension, and you read each letter as you would in English. The third method I learned is spelling each word letter by letter. For best results, I suggest being mindful of the phrase's actual meaning and checking the last portion of this video by one my would you get. Elemental tablets. Although it doesn't require them like opening by watchtower, SRP can incorporate the elemental tablets. This is done by placing each in its direction and tracing a large circle around it before the pentagram. Elemental pentagrams, sigils and names. Instead of alchemical triangles, SRP mainly utilizes zodiacal cherubic signs for its elemental pentagrams. These are Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio and Taurus. Also called fixed, these signs rule the middle portion of the season and thus are regarded as the element's purest and most potent and stable form. They are also anchored to the four parts of the year, corresponding to the four beasts of Ezekiel from a biblical standpoint. Scorpio. Depending on the source, you can use an alchemical ego or the actual Scorpio sign for water. The reason is Scorpio's transformative nature. It transforms from a crawling creature into one that soars in the sky, which according to the Golden Dawn is the alchemical ego of distillation. Spheres and Elements. Geborah or Mars is associated with fire. Tiferet or the Sun with air, Hesed or Jupiter with water, and Malkut with earth. SRP uses god names related to these spheres for its elemental symbols. For fire and Leo, that's Elohim. For air and Aquarius, it's Yodhe Vavhe. For water and Scorpio, that's Ao or El. And for earth and Taurus, it is Adonai. I don't think these names need any introduction. Elemental pentagrams, sigils, and colors. To complement the pentagrams, SRP uses Golden Dawn's flashing colors best expressed in the elemental tablets. That is green Leo inside the fire pentagram, purple Aquarius inside the air pentagram, orange Scorpio inside the blue marine water pentagram, and yellow Taurus inside the black earth pentagram. God forms and great signs. Although this is also omitted by modern magic, like the spirit pentagrams go with the rending the veil and the five equal six signs, the elemental ones go with those of the elemental grades. For far, that's the sign of philosophers, or 4 equals 7, the god form of the goddess Tumishnit. For air is the one of Theoricus, or 2 equals 9, the god Shu supporting the sky. For water is the sign of Practicus, or 3 equals 8, the god form of the goddess Aramot. And for earth is 1 equals 10, or set fighting. Zodiac signs. Unlike Telima, which employs the holy hexagram, the Golden Dawn associates zodiacal energies with the pentagram due to their elemental triplicities. Zodiac signs can be perceived as an element plus modality, fixed, mutable or cherubic. Hence, SRP can work with both elemental and astral powers. For such invocations, the rite uses the pentagram's names and god forms associated with the ruling element in all directions, and what changes is the sign centered in the elemental pentagrams. The Golden Dawn recommends using an astrological scheme of the heavens for the zodiac signs like you would when working with the planets. Then you find the direction of the constellation and treat that as your east. Available for iPad and iPhone, the best app for this is Star Walk 2. Considering your destination and time of working, the app shows the current places of stars, planets, constellations and other stuff in space. Performance Preliminaries Go to the northeast direction of your temple and say Hekas Hekas as the Babeloi. Set the field of operation using a combination of LRP and LRH according to your intention. Perform the middle pillar, or better yet, the revised 5 equals 6 version from the book The Middle Pillar. 4. Give 1 plus 4 knocks on the battery. 5. Perform the Kabbalistic cross. Now, I will go through the combinations for each element. How you're going to place them, only you can decide. The right begins in the east and makes a circle by proceeding clockwise. Far Quadrangle. Trace an active spirit pentagram vibrating bitum. Draw the spirit spokes wheel as if embedding it in the center, vibrating KHA. Make the sign of opening the veil and then give the LVX signs. Draw an invoking far pentagram vibrating Oiptea Pedokhe. Trace the sigil of Liu in green, vibrating Elohim. Give the sign of 4 equals 7. Stop the center of the pentagram and carry the white east tracing one fourth of a circle of brilliant white. Air Quadrangle. Trace an active spirit pentagram vibrating XARP. Draw the spirit spokes wheel as if embedding it in its center, vibrating EHA. Render the veil. Give the LVX signs. Draw an invoking air pentagram vibrating Oruiba Ostpi. Trace a purple or violet Aquarius sigil vibrating Yodhei Vavhei. Give the sign of 2 equals 9. Stop the center and carry the light to your next direction, tracing the second one fourth of the circle. Water Quadrangle. 
Trace a passive spirit pentagram vibrating Hakoma. Draw the spirit spokes wheel in its center vibrating Agua. Open the veil and give the LVX signs. Draw an invoking water pentagram vibrating Empire Segeo and trace either of the signs of Scorpio in orange vibrating L. Assume the gold form of 3 equals 8. And then stop the center and carry the white to your next direction, tracing the third fourth of the circle. Earth. Trace a passive spirit pentagram vibrating Nanta. Draw the sigil of spirit in its center, vibrating Agua. Render the veil and give the LVX signs. Draw an invoking earth pentagram, vibrating more dial Hictaga. Trace a yellow sigil of Taurus, vibrating Adonai. Assume the god form of 1 equals 10, then stop the center of the pentagram, carrying the white to where you started, completing your circle. With the circle completed, call the guardians as you would in LRP, perform another Kabbalistic cross and proceed with your other rites and practical work. Additional thoughts and impressions. According to some sources, SRP finishes by calling the four guardians in all cases. According to others, you do that only with the four elements version. In different scenarios, you call only to that corresponding to the force you're working with. According to third sources, you do not call the guardians at all, but only the spirit you want to conjure. Closing and rending the veil. Unlike the Golden Dawn, Golden Dawn Magic and others, some sources associate rending the veil with active while closing it with passive spirit pentagrams. This never made any sense to me. The reason is that when invoking, you are quote-unquote opening yourself to the elemental universes and thus tuning in. When banishing, you are closing that portal or tuning out. Plus, closing the veil for the passive elements in SIRP always felt like a mess, separating their spirit pentagrams from the whole. In defense of SIRP and Golden Dawn magic. Considering the internet occult community, I see that criticizing the Golden Dawn has become some of a trend nowadays. Particular LHP streamers even claim that the system doesn't do much compared to their practices that really deal with the subconscious and the shadow self. Not arguing with such individuals, I urge them to do SRP daily without closing it, using either an invoking or operant field and maybe the 5 equals 6 middle pillar. And if they are really skeptical, to perform it twice daily. GRP versus SRP. According to Golden Dawn Magic, not combining Hebrew with Enochian, but using either or is how GRP differs from SRP. According to Books on Telema, GIRP is Crowley's less subtle variation, excluding the Enochian, the sigils within the pentagram, and the four archangels. Based on that, some people regard SIRP and GRP as pretty much the same thing. With all due respect, this directly contradicts my experiences. Although partially similar, SRP is pretty unmatched in terms of what it offers as a readily doable single technique. I also believe its cumulative effects could be felt somewhat physically regarding vigor, thought process, creativity and what do you know, even sex drive. Mystical experience A recent trend in New Age and self-help is using psychedelics or other pharmaceuticals to have a specific experience so you can get a profound realizations about yourself and your wife, figuring out what you should be actually doing. On the contrary, considering my teenage experiences with similar substances and SRP's capabilities, I don't think using drugs is mandatory for understanding such profound truths. Instead, I suggest allowing yourself to reflect while taking advantage of SRP's cumulative effects. Completely unrelated with the Golden Dawn, Magister Hardy of the Temple of Set claims that whatever humans can experience with the help of drugs, humans also have the capacity to do so without them. I believe a fully souped up or stacked SRP can certainly give you some of that, especially in the context of understanding yourself better or learning more about yourself. It can also help you achieve what Dr. Christopher Hart defines as undoing yourself. Final words. Although commonly neglected, in my humble opinion, SRP is an exceptional technique essential to any serious practitioner. Regardi believe that the daily performance of opening by watchtower could elevate you to 5 equals 6 without the actual initiation ceremony. Well, as you already know, SRP is the basis for the watchtower ritual. While the middle pillar got me started with magic, helping me combat crippling anxiety, so far, SIRP was the technique to make the most immediate and readily noticeable change in my daily practice. The earlier mentioned Liam Thomas Christopher calls Golden Dawn and Okean the crowning jewel of the system. I believe SIRP is the very epitome of that. If I had one tip for my younger self regarding magic, it would be to adopt the supreme invoking ritual of the pentagram as soon as possible and do it daily while not thinking of magic outside practicing but merely focusing on life. 
With this set, I'll be happy to know what place SIRP has in your practice. Do you prefer it over opening by Watchtower or do you like using them both? Do you agree with my points and how do you like the production quality of this video? Are you into Golden Dawn and Okean or consider yourself more of a deep purist? Also, what kind of videos you'd like to see on this channel and do you prefer production quality like this or will you appreciate more frequent but somewhat simpler videos? I have a strong feeling that this won't be the only video I will make on SIRP, although it is the very best I've made for about 7 years of doing YouTube. Having the vision for it since I did SIRP for the first time, I mainly updated my laptop to an almost fully spec MacBook Pro just to render this video. And despite that, finishing it took months. So please let me know what you think about it. Tell me what you liked or didn't like the most. Like the video if you enjoyed it, support me if you can, and do not forget to check my other works and books. Thank you for your time.